Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Gold Mind. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's guest is Dr. Peace. She started her career out living her parents' dreams, and one evening at a wedding, she realized she was not doing what she needed to do with her life. So she decided to step out by faith and start a business, and she is now living her dreams being a successful entrepreneur. Let's take a listen at our interview together. My first question for you is, did you grow up in a entrepreneurial environment? That's a great question. The answer is no. I did not grow up in any remnants of an entrepreneurial environment. I grew up in a very Nigerian household. I am of Nigerian descent. And so I was basically told that I needed to either become a doctor, a pharmacist, or a lawyer. Those are the three respectable respectable positions of the Nigerian. And so I, long story short, I ended up becoming a pharmacist. I am a doctor of pharmacy. And so a few years ago, I, that's when I transitioned to become a solopreneur. What was it that said, I need to become an entrepreneur. I can't stay where I'm at. I got to trans, um, transition. There were a couple different things that kind of came about during this transition. The first is a few years ago, I found myself sitting at a wedding. I was dressed in all gold. This is when I was working as a pharmacist full time. So I had a great job. I had a great home. I had a great car. Like everything looked amazing from the outside, but the, I could feel that there was something missing in the inside. So I found myself at this family wedding. And as you know, like a wedding is an occasion where everyone's like putting their best face forward. It's, it's a happy occasion, right? But I found myself sitting at this wedding, dressed in this beautiful dress, looking beautiful from the outside, like I had everything together, but inside I felt like I was living, not a lie, but I felt like I wasn't being true to myself, that there was something missing. And I was looking, I was in a bubble, and I was sitting in this bubble watching the world around me interact. Have you ever felt like that before? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I found myself sitting in this bubble of self-doubt and it's not a good feeling. And that's when it hit me. I realized that I need not just to wear gold, I needed to be gold. And this is when I discovered this powerful acronym that I use with my clients and it's Genuine Original Loving Dreamer. Genuine original loving dreamer that is the meaning of gold when you tap into what it is that makes you gold that makes you your authentic original loving self and you start pursuing your dreams that's when you really start to align with your purpose and start to live your best life and that was what was lacking for me then and is what I have now and so that was one of the key things that that helped me transition to become an entrepreneur i mean it didn't happen happen overnight but it sparked that interest and then uh, a year later i discovered i rediscovered my passion and my talent for spoken word so i'm actually a, a spoken word artist and so i i forgot about this talent that i once had when i was a child I was writing in poetry, I was speaking in poetry, I wrote a book when I was 12 that was all poetry, and I forgot about that talent that I once had. And somehow I, I was able to remember it. I picked up the book that I wrote when I was 12, and I was like, wow, this, this is incredible. Like This is an inspirational story about this sky that lights up and how all of nature turns and stops and watches this light show. And to me, it was akin to how when we start to tap into our innate gifts and talents, the world will stop and take notice. So I wrote this when I was 12 and it was speaking to me now 20 years later. Not only that, but it was reminding me that I had this gift of poetry. So I started writing in poetry again and I started performing. And so that kind of tapped that interest in me and maybe I could become a speaker. Maybe I could start to inspire people with my flows. And so that's one of the things that I did, that I do now as an entrepreneur. So I'm a transformational rhythmic speaker and I get the opportunity to speak at different organizations and conferences and events and schools and to, to really help ignite the audience, to help really tap into to the soul. Because spoken word can speak to the soul. Are you familiar with spoken word? 
Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) So there's there's this thing about spoken word, how it just it flows and then it, it, it just speaks directly to the soul. So I discovered this passion, this talent of mine, and I started tapping into that. And so it it kind of developed even further. I was like, you know what? I want to give more. People wanted more. They wanted more than just a five, 10 minute segment of me doing spoken word. They wanted more knowledge about how they can start to overcome their their unfulfilled lives and feeling of being stuck. And I was like, you know what? I can help them out because that's exactly how I felt. And now I'm not, I'm not stuck anymore. I'm, I'm not unfulfilled. And so then I developed these uh, transformational programs where I walk my clients through on how they can get on, get from stuck and unfulfilled to now feeling like they're, they're more aligned with their purpose. And now they're more confidently getting it going, getting it going. And so that's what I do now as an entrepreneur, the speaking and the coaching. And it's just, it's just incredible. It's amazing. Um, (laughs) Thank you. So describe to me, what is Doc Peace of Mind? So Doc Peace of Mind, one, it's a book. I created this book because I wanted to really help others understand what it means to be gold and then use this seven step process to become gold. Because it's one thing to tell someone to be gold and it's another thing to actually be gold, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I've created the seven step process. It's, it's called Doc Peace of Mind Method. And so what it does is, it, is it, it's a seven step process and each of the steps is linked to a powerful flow. And again, like we discussed, the flow is, is just so powerful. It speaks to your soul. So it bypasses the mind that's always continuously negating things and trying to figure it all out. And it bypasses that and speaks directly to the soul. So now you can understand what that step means and apply that step to your life so that you can ultimately become gold, a genuine, original, loving dreamer. So this is the powerful method that I use with my clients. And I actually created a book called Doc Peace of Mind Method. It's a poetic guide to living your best life. That's, I like that, a a poetic guide to living your best life. That's unique. So speaking of your clients, who or what is your ideal client and what do you offer them? So I have two different programs. The golden program is what I kind of touched on earlier. It's, um, it's a program that really helps tap into your golden attributes, who you are, what makes you authentically yourself, what makes you gold. And so it helps you really align with your purpose and then confidently get it going to confidently get it going. And so for this program is really great for women specifically who are feeling stuck, who are feeling stuck and unfulfilled in their in their career and their lives and they need that boost. They need they need that boost. They need to tap into their innate gifts and talents to give them the confidence that they need to finally get it going. And I keep saying the word, the phrase get it going. And that is because that is my family mantra. So so that's something that's been passed down from generation to generation this idea of getting it going. It, my grandmother told my mom this when she, and it, that really inspired her to, to make the move to come to America. And, my, and then that, that same phrase, get it going, helped inspire my mother to go from being a single mother of three to becoming a nurse and then being able to raise these, these incredible daughters, myself included. And that same phrase helped me to become a pharmacist, get it going. And that same phrase helped me to become a solopreneur and get it going. So that's one, that's the thing that you'll find me always saying the phrase, get it going, because that's what we need to do to start, to start aligning with our purpose and, and really fulfilling that. And that I believe that we are all here for a reason. And so when we're just sitting still, when we're sitting idle, when we're not fulfilled, it's, it, we're doing a disservice to ourselves and to others because we're not tapping into those gifts that we are blessed with. And so the golden program helps to do that. It helps tap into your gifts and finally help you to get it going. And then the golden speaking program takes us to a whole nother level. And this is for wellness experts who have a business or are thinking of starting a business, but they're not getting the visibility that they need to grow their business. They're not getting the visibility that they need for, to scale their business. And so what I do is I work with these individuals 
these wellness experts and really help them first of all define their target audience second of all define their soul story because the soul story if have you ever heard of a soul story no so a soul no. story is is a story that is so powerful from your life road so your life road is that life journey that each of us are on and so a soul story is, is a story that is so powerful and that it speaks to your soul and helps speak to other people's souls. So it's something that is really important to share when you are on various platforms, specifically platforms that aren't your own. So you're in front of a whole new, relatively new audience. And so a soul story helps to connect you with that relatively new audience right away. So that they that so that they come into your 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 community and then that in a way helps to grow your global community to expand your network to increase your business and so this is what i share with my clients i teach them how to develop their business how to scale their business how to grow their global community and i give them all the tips and knowledge and tools that they need to do so so when they get these book, when they get booked on certain platforms and on other people's platforms, what do they do? What do they need? What do they need to have prepared? How do they, how do they even go about the outreach? How do they, how do they make the connection? So it's, it's kind of like a, for, for those who are new to this arena, it's, it can be very challenging, intimidating, and it, that, that hinders your ability to finally get it going. If you don't know what you don't know and you, you don't know what you don't know you don't and if you stay in one zone you won't know the unknown so i help my clients break through and and learn and and get it going great so when you said to yourself okay i'm going to do this i'm going to start my own business were there any was there a fear or maybe more than one fear that came to you and if so what did you do to conquer those fears so that you could get going well when i first started my own business I should probably mention that the initial idea of starting my business came over the past year. So it's sorry, it came, it came gradually. So I, I, I told you how this, I, this story I have when I was three years ago, I was sitting in a, at a wedding dressed in gold. And this was, so that was when I was first sparked with this idea of starting my business. Like why, why don't I, be, become a speaker. That was the, the very first spark of that idea. And then I, I was able to, to practice that, to speak on different platforms and to really kind of hone in on that talent. And then last year I got laid off. And so that, that moment when I was told, Dr. P. Suche, we have to let you go. That was the biggest moment of my life because that was when I finally made that transition. So, I mean, there were so many things running through my head, the disappointment, the, the fear of like, what, what am I going to do now? Am I like, so I had two options. I could either start at another pharmacy company, work my way up or start something new, go a different route, try something new. And so there's that, there was that fear in that decision. It's like, I didn't know that. Un I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. I didn't, I didn't know the unknown. So that was what was kind of holding me back from finally making that decision. So I ended up choosing both. I decided to go both. I got another job as a pharmacy working per diem, but then I also started building my brand and my business and seeing where it was going to take me. And so I mean, I think a lot of people can probably relate to this feeling where they're, they have this transition, they have this moment where they have two different roads that they could take. Have you ever had that, that decision, mm -hmm. that this deciding point in your life? In my past. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was sitting there at this road of like, do I do this? Something that I'm very more comfortable with and certain that I could achieve or do I do this something that I you know well there's going to be a lot of it's, it's a steep learning curve I'm going to have to learn something new they don't teach business in pharmacy school you know so it was it was a big decision and there was definitely a lot of fear in that and 
there's fear in the unknown, but it was also a lot of excitement knowing that I could learn something new. And I've always been a fast learner. I've always been able to pick up something new, learn and, and grow. So like, this has been a really amazing experience starting this business. And now it's, it's grown exponentially and it's just really rewarding being able to share the tips and the knowledge that I've learned over the last year with others to help them grow their business and scale. That's good. I'm actually, I've been in a position before where I'm like, do I take the comfortable road or the uncomfortable road? And mm -hmm. this year, actually 2020, when the pandemic hit, the comfortable road just wasn't comfortable anymore. And I got so tired of it. And I was like, I think it's time for me to stop making excuses because it's funny. Years ago, I made this art piece saying, um, I'm going to take the impossible pathway and make it possible. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it sounded nice, but as they say, easier said than done. It seemed like after that, I kept trying to take the possible road instead of the impossible. Ooh. And during the pandemic, it was like, do I, because I got laid off my job um, during the pandemic, and I said, do I really want to look for another job and work a job I know I'm not going to enjoy, I'm not going to have fun, I don't want to get up to go, or am I going to just finally put all myself into what I've been putting part of myself into? And this year was like the year I said, I'm done with this comfortableness. I'm just going to get uncomfortable for the first time in my life. And it, it feels better Whew. than trying to be comfortable, if that makes sense. And it doesn't yeah. make sense when you say it, but mm -hmm. it feels better knowing that I'm not trying to be comfortable. Because, in what ways does it feel better? Well, in the sense that trying to be comfortable, I never saw any fruit. Mm. I never saw the harvest. I never saw the, the results. And it was like, I kept saying, well, I'm gonna just stay on here just for a little bit longer. Yeah. And then when I see something, I'll move to the uncomfortable world. Yeah. And so this has been the first year where it's not huge results, but at least it's better than the no results I was getting being on the uncomfortable road. Yeah. And so that's, that's when so I said, true. okay, it's time for me to stay here and stop trying yeah. to be comfortable. No, I feel you on that, Casey. I mean, I was, I was in this pharmacy, big corporate company working for a fortune 500 cor company, but it just didn't, it, it wasn't fulfilling in the sense that I was working over 70 hour weeks. I was grinding, I was hustling, I was making that money, but I didn't have a social life. Like I, and no, no matter what I did, it wasn't enough. They wanted more. And so that you're, so you're, it, it stuck me that it, it struck me that I was living someone else's dream and I was foregoing my own. Right. I didn't give myself an opportunity to really tap into what I, what what my dreams were, what what I wanted, how I wanted to live my life. I was helping fulfill someone else's dream. And I think oftentimes we kind of get stuck in that rut where we're aligning with someone else's dream and we get comfortable doing that. Right. We get comfortable. This is the way it is. This is what we're supposed to be doing. This is the grind. This is the American dream. This is the life. This. And so it's it's like it's disarming when when you kind of when that all kind of shakes up and then you realize that like you wake up you kind of you wake up from someone else's dream and then you, and then now you have the opportunity to go into your own dream and that can be uncomfortable because we're not used to living our own dream we're used to living someone else's dream <laughs> very much so so was there any i mean i don't want to use this word because Unless you don't get up after you fall, there technically is no such thing as failure. But was there any mistakes or failures you can say you ran into that you learned from that you wouldn't mind sharing that with someone else who's starting this road? Yeah, one thing that when I first got started with my business is I thought that I could just create a website, that I could just create business uh, social media pages for like LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook and get my my website out there and then the business would come in. So as soon as I just got everything in place, got the systems in place, I was able to take credit card payments and everything was lined up that 
the floodgates would open up and I would be swamped with business. And so that was probably the first mistake I made in that assumption. And so I learned that it's more than that. You have to build connections with people. <laughs> They're not gonna know who you are until they know who you are. <laughs> And so one thing that someone actually told me the other day, which was like, duh, was that she asked, are you Waldo? <laughs> because if you're not Waldo, no one's looking for you. Right. <laughs> and so the, the, I guess the biggest mistake I made when I first started was that people would be searching me out, looking for me. And, and then they, they come into my community and want to work with me. And so, I kind of learned the hard way that it wasn't like that. I needed to get seen. I needed to get the visibility that that I needed to kind of bring people into my community. And so that's when I started speaking on other people's platforms, not just as a transformational rhythmic speaker doing spoken word gigs, but also speaking about my business on various platforms, podcasts, other Facebook community groups, and kind of just growing my community in that sense forming authentic connections by sharing my soul story and really kind of building my my global community, if you will, organically. And so that is why I this is a really important piece of what I offer my clients is this strategy on how to get seen, get the visibility that they need to grow because people aren't gonna know who you are until they know who you are. <laughs> All right, so my last question for you. Um, if there was an entrepreneur, whether they be dead or alive, you could meet, who would it be and what might be a question or two you might ask them? Mm. That's a great question. You, you know what? The first person that comes to mind right now is Tyra Banks. I know a lot of people see her as a model, but she is an entrepreneur. Yes, She's produced so fun. many different um, incredible shows, including America's Next Top Model. And so, and then her charisma on and off camera, I mean, I've never really met her off camera, but even when they're doing like the, the takes where she's not really performing or speaking or anything like that, her charisma is incredible. And so it just shot, it just astounds me. And it, it's just so impressive how she is the epitome of gold. She is the epitome of gold. She is a genuine, original, loving dreamer. She went after her dreams. She is authentically herself. She is so, like, you can just feel the love for, for what she does and the love for those who she's around, like, exuding. And so if I were to be able to meet Tyra Banks, I mean, I would love to know if she, if, if, what sparked this, this gold light in her? What sparked this gold light? What is it that makes her really want to exude this light that she's giving out. And I mean, how does she continuously do that? And so, yeah, that would be the biggest question. Like, I'm always curious to see what sparks someone's light. And like, so one of the things that I'm really big on is not only igniting your light, but also igniting the light in others. So like when, when you tap into the light, and yourself by addressing your golden attributes, what it is that makes you a genuine, original, loving dreamer. That's incredible too, because people can see that light. But then I'm also always really big on acknowledging the light in other people. So you can, you can really, you can sense that energy when someone's gold, when someone's authentically themselves, when someone's loving, when someone's aligned with their dreams, you can sense that. And so I'm always big on acknowledging that and like appreciating others for shining their light. And so that's one thing that I would like to, I would love to have a conversation with Tyra Banks about, about the light that she exudes. I like that. <laughs> Greetings. If you are struggling with low energy, low confidence or self-esteem or feeling disconnected or stuck, I welcome you to empower your confidence. I'm Doc Peace. I'm a doctor by trade and spoken word artist at heart, and I use the power of spoken word to help you discover your potential. 
and transform into the best version of yourself so that success becomes inevitable. During this course, you will clearly define your purpose and advance towards that purpose. Here you will discover powerful tools to build confidence, to pursue your passions. You'll also learn how to strengthen connections with yourself and with others and to empower your voice to share your uniqueness and boost self-esteem and overall energy. I once was a shy kid with a lisp and now, now I'm a doctor of pharmacy, transformational speaker and empowerment guru here to teach you how I overcame my self-limiting beliefs and behaviors and began to finally tap into my innate gifts and talents to thrive. In this signature course, you will learn the powerful acronym to access your true inner power and the magical seven step method that gives you the ultimate ability to transform your mindset. I am so excited to embark on this transformational journey with you. That is all the time we have today for The Gold Mind. I want to thank our guest, Dr. Peace, for sharing her journey and her story with us. And of course, you, the audience, who took the time to watch and to listen. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't already, please subscribe and share. And if you have, thank you so much for doing so. Have yourself a great day.